Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm going to show you how I made this tie-dyed psychedelic looking cake. I'm going to first begin by showing you how I made the mushrooms and you can use any color you want for the mushroom caps, but for the bottom I used white and I'm using gum paste by the way. This isn't fondant. If you wanted to use fondant you'd have to add, a, uh, add like a CMC or a Tylos powder to it because I don't imagine it would hold up and hold its shape well enough otherwise. But, so, yeah, I'm using gum paste. Now, I'm going to start by taking some lollipop sticks. You can see them sticking in my styrofoam mold there. And I'm going to make the stem of my first mushroom. I'm going to show you three different mushrooms, and you can kind of expand and do whatever you want with it. But once I have a nice little stem on my mushroom, I trim off the extra at the top and the bottom, just so I have enough to stick into the cake, and I have enough at the top to support the mushroom cap part without it being too um, too high or stick outy. I don't want it to break through the top of the cap. I'm gonna stick it in the frame. You can see I got a couple of them there. This first shape I'm gonna do is just gonna be the loose triangle one, the stereotypical psychedelic mushroom that you're used to seeing. And as you can see, I just kind of roll it between my hands against my cake, uh, my um, surface there, until I got a nice steepled effect. I am rolled out some white gum paste and I'm using a little circle cutter to make some little circles going to stick them on the mushroom cap because really what is a mushroom without the little quintessential circles of white on top. I don't know if they all have them or not, but mine certainly do. I'm just going to stick them around. If you find that they're not sticking to your gum paste, if you use a paintbrush with a little bit of water on the back, you can just brush a little water onto your circles and then stick them on and they'll stick right to it. No problem. So once you press it on, there you go. You got your first little mushroom easy right it really isn't hard the next mushroom you can see I already have the stem on the stick there taking another one of these kind of rosy pink colors and I'm making a flattened disc it's not totally flat it's kind of um, thicker in the center but on one side I'm gonna add that little flat white circle that I made I'm just kind of smoothing it out a bit so I, I rolled out my white gum paste really thin cut out a circle that will fit the diameter and the size of my circle there and now that I have it on I'm pinching the edges so that the pink comes down and covers the, the side, the white part. And then I'm going to take my knife and make impressions in the white all around to create the gills of the mushroom cap. I'm not worried about going exactly toward the cent into the center. You could do like I did, just do all around. You could do straight across like you're cutting, you know, a pizza or something like that. But make a whole bunch of lines in it until you're happy with it. And I don't know, chances are people won't even know they're there, but you'll know they're there, darn it. So if anyone looks up underneath, you, they'll see the detail and they'll be like, wow, that's a lot of detail. So once you have your gills in there, I have too much of that stick sticking out. So I had to trim some off and then stick it on. Look at that mushroom. It's very cute. Now I'm going to take some of that white extra that I have and I'm going to just pinch out kind of a frilly edge lacy piece that I'm going to wrap around the top of the stem there. Uh, you, you'll, you'll know what I'm doing here. I don't know the name of it, but it's that little piece that you see on mushrooms when they're really mature and um, they have that just that frilly little skirt like around the top. And that's what I did right there. My mushroom cap was getting a little tippy. Okay, now I got some circles. I'm putting my circles on this one. And if you look at the cake in the corner, it might be hard to tell because it's kind of small. A few of the mushrooms that I stuck in there have a large mushroom and a small one right next to it against it. And you can do that if you want to. It looks kind of nice, I think. And it's the exact same thing. You just make a tiny little stem and a tiny little mushroom cap, whatever shape you got, and just a little bit of water, press it against the side, and it'll stick. So there you go. There's the flat mushrooms. Now we've got the tapered mushroom the flat mushroom and now we're going to do more of a fluted mushroom um i think there are some around me that are called black trumpets that are edible that are shaped like this but this one also can be used in um, ocean themed um, cakes you can use this kind of a decoration as like a sea sponge or a sea anemone kind of a shape so i've got the stalk as you see i rolled out a or i shaped out a cone into the top and now I'm rolling out the same color as before and make a circle and I'm going to place it down inside that cone. Uh, again, I don't know if there should be white dots inside this one. I honestly don't think so. 
I put them in there because it just kind of fits the theme and it, it makes everything go together a little nicer. So I threw some dots in there and I'm going to add again the gills on the outside. With this one you're going to go, you're going to want to go, excuse me, down the stalk a little bit as well as at the top. All right, so there you go. There are the three different kinds of mushrooms. And at any point, you can make different colors like you see in the cake picture at the side. Do whatever you want. Now, I created these flowers using these little mold cutters. Um, I just made a few daisies because doing a psychedelic cake, it really seemed like I should have some big white daisies. So I did a few of the flowers in different sizes. Uh, these molds are readily accessible at any type of craft store. And also, if you see any tools or supplies that I use that you could use, check the link in the description below. It'll be able to help you out so you can find anything that you might need, including gum paste, because I know not everybody can get their hands on it. Okay, so yes, I've got my yellow or my white flowers. I'm just taking balls of yellow and pressing them into the center. And I can, <laughs> I did this after I made the cake and I made all the colors. So you're gonna have to forgive my hands. They're all stained up from all from mixing all the colors together. But and I, I was, at the end I thought the daisies were a good idea. So yeah. Anyway, yes. So I put the daisies with the yellow center in each one, taking my time to make sure that they cover the pet all like the center all the way out to the petals. You just don't want to go too far with it. And on about half of them, I rolled out a little bit of black and I made two little dots for the eyes and the smiley face because, yeah, the, the happy face is works too. Okay, now we're getting to the cake part. This is how I made the psychedelic swirly colors. Um, it was very hot and very humid when I made this cake, so everything was really sweaty. It was really, really frustrating. So I was unable to do a tie-dyed effect that the person had originally wanted, so they were okay with this instead. And I gotta say, I love it. It's very colorful, very swirly, kind of got the, uh, I wanna say lava lamp with the color swirls moving around, going to it, feel to it. And to create that, all I did is exactly what you see. I've got my different colors, purple, blue, green, pink, yellow, and orange. I rolled them out into a bunch of snakes, as you can see. I made a big wad of them. I broke them in half and put them together because I needed to. It was just too much. And anywhere I felt like too many colors of the same color were touching, like the too many pinks were right there, I just pulled one off and put it in somewhere else. Now I twisted it all together as you see and then folded it in half. And once again I'm going to add in any color that I think might be missing or might be, uh, you know, just make it break up a little more. And you can see already it's a very colorful swirl. It's a lot of fun here. And now that I've got my wad, I'm just going to start rolling it. I usually use Crisco or some type of vegetable shortening on my surfaces in order to make the fondant not stick. This is fondant, by the way. I'm sorry, I didn't say that sooner. Uh, I know some people do really well with cornstarch or powdered sugar. I am just not cool like that. <laughs> I, I have to use my Crisco. But once you turn, once I turn it over, you can see the colors, and you're gonna notice that too. When you do this, when you roll it out, you're gonna have one side that just looks nicer than the other, and that's the side you're gonna go with. Once again, I put a little more Crisco on it, and I'm just rolling and pulling. And it's not a perfect system. Like you can see in the upper right hand area, where my hand just was my right hand, the orange is thin enough that the purple is kind of coming through a little bit. It's stained the color. It's not staying quite as true as I'd like it to be. It's going to happen. I don't know how you avoid that unless you're like really, really good at your color placement and strategy, which I am not. I just like to swirl it and see what happens. So yes, I've got my bright colors. I got my swirly swirls going on. I'm rolling it out so it's the size of the cake and you can see the backside a little bit. It's kind of dull. It's not as nice. So yeah, there we go, right over the cake. I bumped the camera with my arm, so sorry about that. And I'm just going to cover the cake just like you would any other time with fondant. I smooth down the sides, make them all nice and flush to the cake. Try to avoid any of those wrinkles and folds that can happen on you. And I'm trimming off the extra at this. Oh, there's my Roomba in the background. <laughs> and I'm trimming off the extra at this point because it's heavy and it's hanging so much off my cake that it's pulling and it was starting to give it that like elephant skin right at the edge up near the top. My cakes are kept in the fridge before I put the fondant on so they are chilled 
which makes it kind of a little harder sometimes for the fondant to stick but it makes it strong enough that when it does pull it's not going to deform the cake or create you know sagged in corners or edges or anything like that so i'm using my fun paddles to smooth the side some more really trying to work on the edge i don't know if you noticed but when i first moved the camera so you could see the cake i have it sitting on an upside down pasta bowl that i took out of my cabinet this way the cake is lifted up off of the plate my or my cake spinner <laughs> there and I can get to the lip of the cake, to the edge of it, so I can really trim off that extra and tuck it just right, and just to the way I like it. So yes, that's all I'm doing here, trimming off the extra with a pair of scissors I have. I keep them nice and clean, don't worry. They're my special little scissors that I get really mad if someone takes. And I just smooth, smooth, smooth until it looks good. Now once again I'm going to do the same thing. I've got all my colors. I had them all in, in the ropes or snakes. I twisted it up as you can see. I'm going to kind of fold it in half a little bit. I didn't do it yet with this one because I they weren't just, they just weren't coming together as well as I'd hoped. But you're going to see in a second. I'm still going to go around. This is also going on the bottom tier. This was a three tier cake and it was huge. So I didn't have enough fondant to make it all the way on the bottom tier. So this is what I did. I took my colors and I rolled them into a donut. It doesn't matter so much if the center of the of the bottom cake has fondant there because it's going to be covered by the top cake. So you're not even going to see it. And uh, let's be honest, most people are going to pick that stuff off anyway. It looks pretty. It tastes not so pretty. Now, once I'm happy with it, and I think it'll actually cover my cake, <laughs> I go ahead and lay it over. And you can see here what I was talking about. I had marked out where my support system, my stacking system is going to go. And it's basically a skirt at this point. I have the hole in the center, which again, I don't care about. It's going to be covered by the cake, and I didn't have enough. I guess I could have had enough if I more carefully planned, because I do have scraps there on the side. But anyway, anyway... I'm just going to treat it like normal, smooth the sides down, make it look pretty, and then I'm going to cut away a little bit more of the fondant there at the top in order to expose where the cake plate's going to sit, just like that. Once I have it marked out properly, I'm going to trim away the rest, and I'm trimming this away so that the cake plate will sit flush against the top of the cake. Uh, it's going to be close. Um, I probably could have trimmed down those feet or the legs a little little bit more in order to make it sit a smidge more flush but it's all right I'm gonna have the borders around the edges it'll be fine so I'm really not worried and again this cake was in the refrigerator so it was very firm <laughs> very firm which is why you're seeing all my muscles go in and then I actually took my small rolling pin and was like hammering the legs back into the cake the last centimeter or so just to get it down as much as I could and yeah, once they're pressed into place, gonna pop the top on. It's gonna lock right into those legs and it will be very sturdy. I like the plastic stack king system because it really is very sturdy. It's not like the plastic straws. It's not like the wooden dowels that if it gets warmer, it could get a little wibble wobbly. It ain't going nowhere. And I also like it when it has to support a lot of weight. Again, I've got a three-tiered cake, so I'm going to do the plastic on the bottom. I'm going to use the wooden dowels here for the top layer to sit on the middle layer. Because, again, they're smaller, they're lighter. I didn't think it needed as much support. So, And it saves the customer money, honestly, <laughs> if you don't have to use your full-on plastic stacking system every single time. So yeah, that's my middle layer there. I'm just adding the wooden dowels. I was using the mold or the uh, cake pan for the six inch cake in order to kind of get the idea where those wooden dowels should sit. Just stuck them in, a little bit of icing in between each layer too. Under each cake, I do have a cardboard cake plate. So once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna plop it right on there. I can move it a little bit. And then I'm going to stick it back in the fridge, back in the fridge, back in the fridge. And that'll lock up that icing that I just put on there, making that top tier really stick to that second middle tier nice and tight. Now, I have the two tiers on top of the other cake. <laughs> it's all stacked together. I put some little silver sparkles on it. I put my flowers on it. 
You can see the fan blowing on it because it was so stinking humid that it was sweating like crazy. There was one of those mushrooms that I mentioned before. If you put one with a small one next to it, just because for something different. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of different colors. It was hot. It was a little wilty, a little sweaty, but it came out really nice. It's fun, colorful, psychedelic, and it tasted great. So there you go. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because it really helps me out as well. I've got a lot of other videos out there, so be sure to take a look. And as always, thanks for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.